On Friday, December 30th, 2022, Pennsylvania State Police arrested 28-year-old Brian Christopher Kohlberger in connection to the four Idaho University students that were murdered in cold blood in the early morning hours of November 13, 2022 in their rented Moscow, Idaho home. But you wouldn't believe this the whole time, that Brian was just acting like one of us. He was very active in Idaho murder Facebook groups, talking and chatting with others like a concerned citizen of the Moscow community, praying to catch these killer or killers that did this crime. It's haunting to think that the alleged murderer was in those groups this whole time, giving his thoughts and theories as to what happened. Here's some audio and video of Brian giving his thoughts and theories in this crime. Into um, the quadruple homicide in Idaho. Um, I don't. I don't want to be any more specific than that because I don't want to. I don't want to put anybody in a challenging or contentious situation regarding their continued employment. Um, and I will say what I'm about to tell you is secondhand, but it is from what I believe to be a very reliable source. Again, this can only be considered a rumor as I don't have firsthand knowledge. I never planned on posting any of this information out of respect for the victim's families. However, now that one of the victim's fathers has released some of the gruesome details himself, I'd like to share some of the um, investigative theory. Um, as you know, the two women were found in the same bed, but um, with similar wounds, that's what's being reported. Um, that's not exactly 100% true, um, at least in, in, in regard to the fact that they weren't um, they hadn't fallen to sleep in the same bed. Um, one of the victim's wounds were deep gouges that were delivered with extremely aggressive force, so much so that the victim's liver and lungs were destroyed. Um, here's the theory that's happening. Um, they definitely think it was a man because of the force of the wounds. Um, the person must have been strong, very strong. Um, they think the man came into the room after doing what they did on the second floor. They went upstairs. Um, the person cleanly and quietly, I'm um, unalive to the first victim. The second victim awoke and tried to run. The man, they believe that the, ma the man possibly grabbed her and she screamed loudly. I'm just gonna pause the video for a few seconds here and I just want you to look very closely at the video as you can see Brian recording himself talking like not a care in the world about these murders. Look closely. Um, the man then harmed her and the reason the wounds were of such force, he was doing it, he was delivering it quickly and forcibly to quiet her, um, which I apologize for how I know it's disturbing, but anyway, um, how, how do we know that she screamed? Um, because three individuals reported hearing a scream between, um, between 3.45 and 4 o'clock. Um, that's why the police have such a specific time frame as to when the murders occurred. Because I don't know if you noticed, but um, the authorities weren't called the next day until late in the morning, yet they had a very specific time frame when the murder happened. They think the scream is why. Um, and after reviewing video files from the neighborhood, uh, they reviewed security cameras in the area and they have an audio file where you, where they, I haven't heard it, but I was told that a clear, you could clearly hear a loud scream from a female that scream was recorded at exactly 3.38 a.m. Um, neighbors say they do, didn't call the police because they said there's often loud noise coming from the house. Um, I was told that there were parties there all the time. Again, I don't know if that's true, but it's what I was told. Um, the weapon used was a long serrated edged hunting knife with a fixed blade. The weapon had not been in the house. The person brought it with them and took it when they left. Um, the two victims were on the same bed, not side by side. One victim was found on top of the other. The reason is that the one tried to escape and was grabbed, harmed, and then shoved and fell on top of her friend. Um, that is why there is um, a lot, there's a lot of problem, blood, blood mixtures on this at the scene. 
Um, uh, they're also desperately looking for this white car. The reason being is that it was seen speeding by an a and slash gas, I think a and gas station. I don't even know what that is, but anyway, that's again, it could be wrong. I was just told it was seen speeding by an a and gas station slash hangout um, at 345. Now, if the screen was recorded at 338 and the car sped by at 345, it's a very tight time frame, but it is possible that the person left immediately and rushed and was seen speeding by. Also, the scream may have been what caused the person to quickly leave. Um, that scream could have been what saved the other two roommates' lives. Um, the person knew that they might be detected, so they sped away. Again, this is all just rumor. Um, take it for what it is. Um, I just pray for these young people. I hope they rest in peace and that their families can find peace um, after this horrible crime, and I hope that the person who committed it can be brought to justice. Thanks a lot.